Could UConn snag Big Z from Kentucky? You're locked on UConn. You are locked on UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On UConn your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the only podcast on UConn that is undefeated since its inception, March 3rd. We're 12-0 and with our own 12-game winning streak, so we'll keep that going through the offseason. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs Helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions may apply. Zvonimir Avisic enters the transfer portal. And is this the type of splash that UConn will make if, say, Alex Caravan goes pro? And that's the big caveat because he is 50-50, very much like Hassan Diara. Because let's face it, Big Z is a stretch four. That's what Alex Caravan is. Couldn't you see Big Z trailing, getting a dump pass from Hassan or a a trail pass from Amon Noel, Jalen Stewart, and hitting some deep threes for this 2024-25 season? I could. He's not a center because of his lack of size, which is crazy to think because he is 7'2". But at only 220 pounds, I have more meat on my bones at nearly 6 feet and he's rail thin. So I all all I can think about is, you know, people have been talking about Robbie Avila uh potentially as as someone that could be a you know, a facilitator, a good shooter from deep in this Luke Murray style Euro offense that UConn makes, that UConn has. But why not make a splash? Avisic is the type of player that if UConn lost Alex Caravan could usher in that type of new era player as another standard bearer for UConn. Not to say that he's better or worse than Alex Caravan, because Alex Caravan does so much more than scoring. He he is such a, uh, a winning player for UConn. They didn't dub him the brain center because all he can do is shoot threes. But I wonder if a, a European-style player like Avisic is the type of player that UConn could replace Alex. Because let's face it, if you have to replace Alex Caravan, it's going to take more than just one player. It's going to take a collective effort to create the type of winning plays that you need to put yourself in a position to win Big East championships, to win uh, conference tournaments, to win NCAA tournaments, let alone just games. It's so hard to win just one NCAA tournament game. The fact that you kind of has won 12 in a row is a testament to the type of player that Alex Caravan is and his team around him. So, but let's dive into Avisic a little bit. You know, he can shoot the three incredibly well. I think he was only 38% from three in in really short minutes this year. The type of, type of team that Calipari uh, ran at Kentucky was more, say, team-based. It wasn't around one individual player, but they shot it up. They, they, they ran. The kid's in shape. He wouldn't have an issue running up and down the floor. Um, he's raw, but he's intelligent. Of all the players that have hit the portal in Kentucky, Avisic is the only one I could see UConn sniffing around. Aaron Broch- Bradshaw a little bit, but I think he's headed elsewhere. And this is a pipe dream. Let's face it. You know, I think if UConn could make a splash in this transfer portal season, I would love it on a lot of different levels. Kentucky's coming off an embarrassing uh, coaching search where they were turned down by Dan Hurley not once, not twice, but three times. Um, I believe only twice by Scott Drew. Um, and then to land on Mark Pope, who let's be clear, I think is actually a really good hire, but it wasn't who they wanted. Um, and I think Kentucky's going to find that they landed in a, a good spot, even when they were angling to not have a guy like Mark Pope, because let's face it, he doesn't have the resume, hasn't won an NCAA tournament game. His teams were competitive at BYU in the big 12, but no one was really scared of them. Um, it's intriguing. It's intriguing to think about what a flip of Big Z to UConn from Kentucky would do to the mindset of the Kentucky fan base. I think that would be 
pretty incredible from that perspective. And if he doesn't come, it really doesn't matter. Um, but, but again, I find that to be the fun part about this transfer portal season is no player is really out of line to talk about. Um, you know, the entitlement of that Kentucky fan base to think that Dan Hurley was just going to come down to, to coach their team. It would be kind of, kind of, a, a, a great, almost troll job by the UConn, uh, not fan base, but by the UConn administration to to even just kind of sniff around Visich. But that's that. I feel like again, long stretch. I'd I'd say there's like a twenty percent chance that he even visits. I think he's actually sitting down with Mark Pope today to see if he goes back to Kentucky. And I believe I think it was sixty percent on um, rivals and on three had a Visich at sixty percent to go to Arkansas and follow Cal Park. So we'll see. A lot of times European players are going to follow their coach. He also could just go back to Croatia and play professionally because he's that good. We'll talk about more players in the transfer portal after this. When you're hiring for small business, you want to find quality professionals who are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team, faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might open be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're looking for LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong, you're, if you're not looking at LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. LinkedIn has 86% of small businesses who get qualified candidates within 24 hours. They hire professionals. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions may apply. Well, let's think about some of the trends with Transfer Portal with UConn. Two of their main contributors who are no longer going to be on UConn just based off of eligibility, Tristan Newton, who just got his jersey retired uh, in stores, Husky of Honor, number two, <clears throat> two years, two-year transfer, two championships. Not a bad resume. Um, how old is Tristan? 23, 24 years old. Um, who's the, another transfer that comes to your mind is obviously Cam Spencer, right? Cam transferred in is the – was the uh, – Hawkins fill in, um, you know, he fit in so well to this team because of his relationship with Dan Hurley. But also think about it, having two of your guards on your team and then even Hassan, who is another transfer from Texas A&M, is an older guard. They were, they're, they're mature players. You have a young point guard coming in. You have young sophomores that are ready to take that next step. But how much leadership do these guys have how much can you expect even though i'm excited about a mod noel from him as a point guard to get everyone in the right place um the next the person who i'm about to suggest isn't a point guard he isn't a a traditional i think pick that people are talking about it's someone that i keep coming back to because i think as much as we like to poke fun at purdue Purdue University, the basketball program, has a similar arc to UConn in terms of the types of players that they're trying to trying to find. They're trying to find guys who aren't complainers, who are lunch pail guys, who are going to put on their hard hats and a million different other platitudes and, and metaphors that you can think of for a hardworking individual who is going to show leadership even when they're having a disappointing season or even when things aren't right. And that person right now for me is Mason Gillis. Think of the success UConn has had with the older transfers, right? We just talked about it. Cam and Tristan, Hassan Diara. I think Mason Gillis would say that he had a disappointing tournament run because they didn't win the title. But also, I think he also had a pretty decent semifinal game against NC State. I think he is, pardon me, I think he is a smart player. I think he improved his three-point shooting in the offseason. He's, he's up to 47% on the th on three last year. In the right system, he can pump those averages up from six and a half points per game to double digits. He was their first guy on the bench. Is that his? Would that be his role at UConn? Potentially. Could if Alex leaves, could he be a starter? A hundred percent. He's a good teammate. 
he 100 can play a role on a team that does not command stars because think about it who is the biggest star in college basketball and not named caitlin clark it was zach Eady. for better or for worse he was the guy that everyone was talking about i don't think mason gillis had a problem with that i think mason gillis even though he's from indiana uh, I think in Newcastle, Indiana, he's been there for four years at Purdue. I think a change of scenery might be great for him. I think being on a team like UConn would be the type of change that could transform him into, you know, getting a little more exposure. Um, playing in the Big Ten is great. And, you know, being on Fox, but playing for the defending national champions, a team that you lost to, you know, is is not as uncommon as you would think, you know, in the you see it in the NBA all the time, teams that lose in the finals, they poach from the, from the losing team, the guys who hurt them and Mason Gillis didn't hurt UConn, but they, it's because of the game plan and the three point focusing on, on guarding the three point line. That's his game. Um, but not everyone's going to, going to co- get coached like UConn. I think he would come in and, 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 and be fantastic for us. You know, everyone comes in as a star from high school, but he was, He's been averaging about six points and five rebounds at, at, at Duke for, I mean, at Duke, at Purdue for what feels like 100 years. Transferring to UConn, he wouldn't, have to, he wouldn't have to lead a team. He would just be a leader of many as an older guy who's been through four seasons of college basketball and kind of be the elder statesman. So I, I think it would be a great fit. Well, this time of year, we have the NFL draft is coming up and locked on has an NFL mock draft live April 17th at 7 o'clock, streaming on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7, streaming on YouTube, or on the free Fire Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th, 7 p.m., to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise, with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL mock draft on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7, streaming only on YouTube, or also the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. We're going to talk about two more transfer portal breakdowns coming up after this. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all in one app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. I mean, for me, I just use FanDuel to uh, for a futures bet on Scotty Scheffler. So thank you to Scotty Scheffler for that. Uh, also for when UConn won the national championship. So definitely get your get your bets in there. Um, last couple of players I want to talk about in this transfer portal episode. Um, and get used to it, guys. This transfer portal stuff is not going anywhere. Uh, for those of you that don't like it, I apologize. Guess what? It has a shelf life. But it's fun to talk about because it's it's in our face all the time guys are there's there was what um i think our uh, jc zemble said there's 1300 plus players in the transfer portal we could do a transfer portal episode every day for three years and just do one player every day that's how many players are in the transfer portal so it's not going anywhere anytime soon i don't think it's going to get any better if anything it's going to get worse transfer portal has replaced kind of the recruiting talk at least in college basketball Uh, Because it's more important to a college basketball player uh, to or college basketball coach in a program to get quality transfers, guys who have been through the through the rigors of a of a college basketball season, versus say, you know, bring in five or six freshmen who are really good but don't know, you know, for lack of a better term, don't know really anything about college basketball. They just know that they're talented. So to get some people that have been through this process is is kind of essential for a college basketball program at this point coaches may hate it but when they get you know quality players who have experience it's hard to deny it sorry for the choppy nature of that one i was yawning so much but i also had to use the restroom so basketball players in the transfer portal this to me there's there's two obvious players that uconn should be going after and the first one is someone that they recruited 
early on in the process before he chose Rutgers. And it's a name that we've talked about before. It's a team, the name that's been out there for a while. Cliff Amoriu from Rutgers. It's almost seven feet. So six, 11 and a half. There's the obvious, right? We got Cam as a transfer from Rutgers. Steve Peichel is the Rutgers head coach is a UConn alum. Played on that 89-90 dream season under Calhoun. Funny Funny uh, personal note about Steve Peichel. I went to his ba- basketball camp as a kid at Southington High School, and he was asking all the players, all, all the the you know the campers, and I was one of them. We're all sitting there, crisscross applesauce, and he's going, "So who's the best?" He's got this T-shirt, and I'll uh, raise your hand if you know the answer to this question. So he asked he asked the question, "Who is the best player at UConn right, ever? Who's the best player ever?" And everyone is raising their hand. Uh, uh, you know. You know, any player, I think I said in a Dove Hennefeld, and he just looked at me like, you're so dumb. He wanted us to say him. And so this one smart kid uh, who picked up on his his shtick, uh, raised his hand and said, you, Steve Peichel. And he said, very good. And he gave him the T-shirt. And we were all like, man, what a jip. But anyway, that's my Steve Peichel story. Great guy. Um, good coach. Uh, wish him the best at Rutgers. But anyway, Cliff Amorio from, from Rutgers. I hope we get him from from. From uh from Rutgers, seven feet with even a bigger long uh, wingspan. He's built like a tank. He averaged thirteen point two points, six nine point six rebounds, two two and a half blocks as a junior, and like about thirty point three minutes per night. Saw those numbers dip a little bit last year: ten point four points, eight point three rebounds, just under three blocks a night as a senior. So his defensive numbers went up. His rebounding and points went down. I don't care if he averages eight eight and three for us. You're not going to ask him to average thirteen fourteen points a game. If he's somewhere in the middle of, we talked about this earlier with the Terrace Reed uh, potential comps to come in and kind of as the in between a Donovan Klingon and Samson Johnson. So if it's between Cliff and Terrace, Cliff is the, I feel like the more ready made guy. I think Terrace could end up being a little bit more of, have some more upside. He's younger, has years of eligibility, could potentially be a guy that plays two or three years at UConn. Um, <sighs> I have, a, I have a hard time thinking that we're going to get both of those guys, so that's a toss-up for me. I would go with Terrace, not because he visited, but because I feel like, again, like I said, he's. He, I think his ceiling is higher. I think his his floor is about – I think the floor of Cliff and, and Terrace is about the same. But, man, Cliff is like a energy guy. You know, he's, he's like Samson Johnson, but with the body of um, Terreno Walker. If you know that name, you, you're as old as I am. Just absolute, just just a beast um, for UConn, and just could come in and you know bully teams, and could get a little nasty uh, on, on folks. And I, I, I'm I'm full, I fully would love that for for Cliff to come in here and dominate for UConn. But another name that is really interesting to me, and this is again more about the Alex Caravan staying or going, is Scotty Middleton. Scotty Middleton is is a freshman out of Miami, Florida. He is trying to test the NBA waters because he has an NBA body and he has potentially an NBA type game. And I think what people don't understand about when players get these evaluations, they're doing it as it is their right to do, but they're also doing it to see what the NBA thinks of them. It doesn't mean because like when Bronny James declares for the NBA draft and keeps his eligibility, it's to get an idea, an honest evaluation of where you potentially could be picked. If it's anywhere but a first-round pick, I think you should come back. And I think Dan Hurley has mentioned that in the past. So, Scotty Middleton. It's a big wing, good positional size, six foot six plus, more like six seven. Very long arms. Uh, his six seven frame. He plays more like a six ten guy with hot, with his reach. He is really brought into kind of the defensive end of the floor at Ohio State, particularly during you know his high school season. The reason why he was recruited so heavily is. He gets really low. He's light on his feet. He's pretty physical with his chest. He's active off the ball. He doesn't. He plays defense without fouling, which is fantastic. His length, his length keeps him in in plays even when it looks like he's initially beat, so he can block shots. Um, and that also is kind of plays into UConn's game, which is when they have shot blockers. So if they were to have a guy like Cliff or a guy like Terrace Reed behind them, and in the past they've had a myriad amount of shot blockers when you do get beat and you're playing physical you don't have to foul and you can allow your shot blocker to erase mistakes he's already proven 
with Scotty Middleton, he's proven in the past in high school and then in, in at college he could uh, defend multiple positions. So he's not a primary playmaker, and the rest I think is going to be very similar comp to, comp to Alex Caravan. He can get over the top of smaller defenders. He shows some flashes of slashing potential, although he still gets bumped off the line of his drive at times. However, he's a bit of a role player. That's what we want. I don't need five star guys to come in and think they're going to be, you know, Ray Allen at UConn or Rudy Gay. He doesn't need to need to score a lot of points to impact winning, and has long term three and D potential. So Scotty Middleton can shoot the three. Is he have the type of uh, range that Alex Caravan does? No, because his shooting needs to keep evolving. But he's the type of guy that's six seven, six six, six seven, six eight frame that can be that carbon copy. A little more athletic than Alex, but I think Alex is a better basketball player, has a better has better basketball instincts. But I love the fact that this guy, Scotty Middleton, is the type of player that can come in and potentially be a big impact guy without having the ball in his hand. That's what we want. So when all of us are throwing out the the sexy names, you know, you should get this guy, you should get that guy, think about who is running this offense. Think about who designs it. So who's running it? Dan Hurley? Who's designing it? Luke, uh, Dan Hurley and then Luke Murray is designing plays. They're all thinking about what is best for the program at UConn. What's mutually beneficial? I love finding guys at the lower level that they could potentially play, but to play at UConn, the standard that they've set, you have to, in my opinion, have had some power five, power three experience. So most of these guys, if they're not from that, that's why you're not seeing me do a show on Danny Wolf because as much as I think Danny Wolf is a good player, I just don't see him being that impact player that you could get that's going to really affect change on either side of the ball. Because I feel like on offense, I think he would get pushed around more. And a guy like Scotty Middleton, you have no worries with that. A guy like Cliff Amore, you're not going to have to worry about that. Even when we go all the, back, all the way back up to the beginning of the show with Big Z, as small as he is from a weight perspective, can't teach seven two guys. You know what I mean? Like he's the type of guy that I think could be, and he, he blocks shots. So talent, fire, drive, the ability to play multiple positions in this kind of, you know, continuingly per- positionless type of basketball, the way that the, the way that the game is played and the way that UConn wants to play it is really what I feel like could end up being a a big thing for UConn as they as they go transferring and recruiting in the in the future. So I say this last last thing before we uh, head out of this bonus pod episode of Locked On UConn. Remember to Locked On has launched the first ever national sports twenty four seven streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports today is here for you twenty four seven, covering the top sports of of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports today now. Available on the free Fire TV channels app. This has been a bonus episode of Locked on UConn. I'm your host, Mark Zanetto. I'm remembering to tell you to stay locked in, stay connected, make sure your toughness meter is always rising. And as always, during this transfer portal season, go Huskies. <laughs>